Okay, something that has always driven me absolutely bonkers in the camera world and in the just videography industry is just how bad on-camera monitors are. They all stink, all of them. They're just all terrible. And I don't understand why we can't come out with a company or a, just a product, a company can't come out with a product that just works really, really well and is intuitive and has good UI. And I think a lot of that actually has to do with the camera manufacturers. Because even on this Sony camera, if you go to turn on HDMI info display where you can see your settings on your monitor, your touchscreen gets disabled for some reason. And also the monitor puts these massive black bars. So your five inch monitor turns into a two and a half inch. And it just doesn't make sense for a company like Sony, for example, that makes incredible cinema cameras and these like cameras like the a7s but they also make the sony xperia phone which is an incredible display why can't sony just come out with their own monitor that works really really well with their cameras that has an intuitive ui that just maybe has an oled screen i don't understand why camera monitor companies are just so bad. Even you take a product that is as strong and as thick and as beautiful and as metal casing like Atomos. The Ninja V, once again, the UI, pretty darn terrible. And also, you can't seem to work where you get your camera settings on the screen without your Sony camera screen going black without, while still, you can't, you can't touch to focus, you can't do all the things that a camera is designed to do with just the extension of a monitor. And if it's, if it's all a battle between the camera companies and monitor companies, why why can't we just all agree? I don't understand it. It's been a frustration since I've been in this industry and since I've started using monitors. The cheap ones are cheap and stink. The really expensive ones, you spend all your money and they still stink. It just doesn't make any sense. So that is hopefully where this guy might help to save the day. You see, this is the Port Keys LH7P, which is a newer monitor from Port Keys, again, on the cheaper side, but something that this one does that is different from every other monitor I've ever had is it includes camera control, which if I'm looking at it, the biggest complaint that I have when I'm shooting is I love seeing that big red box around the screen just to let me know that I'm still recording. And I've had um, my editor complain a lot about me missing some clips before because the start stop, I start on a clip or think I'm starting, I'm filming the ground, I go up and I start, which I stop recording. <sighs> This happens to me all the time. And if I could just see that red box around my monitor, it probably wouldn't happen as much. So hopefully this Porky's LH7P is going to fix some of those issues. Um, I'm excited for it, I think. We will see. So I just wanted to kind of unbox it, talk about it briefly, and then ideally I'll use it for the first time this weekend and we can actually see if it helps my problem. So like all Porky's monitors, they come in this cool carrying case. Um, little plastic kind of pelican case like, which is cool. Unfortunately for me, I probably won't use it much, but it's cool if you um if you want to use it. Holy moly, she's a beauty. Then lightweight, just like a monitor should be. I love the fact that this monitor has this DC seven to 24 volt barrel connection here, because unlike the Atomos monitors, you can't actually power them with a DC voltage. But this one has it built in. It's thin, it's light, but boy, I'm excited to use this. So in the box, you get this cool carrying case, obviously. You get one of these port keys um, monitor holder things, which I have one already on this camera rig. I don't really need another one, but it's good that they include it. And then you also get, which I thought was pretty cool. A little USB drive where you can load your LUTs and things like that. And an HDMI cable. This USB drive is cool because everybody has USB drives, but also it's nice that they include it. It's nice that it's dedicated. We will see. So I'm gonna rig this up to my camera. I'm gonna run through, probably update the software and um, hopefully give you a little walk through. And then ideally I can um, talk about how much I like it or don't like it on the, um, 
on the on my wedding this weekend. So another cool feature, quarter 20 threads on both of the sides. So if you are vertical shooting, which we do every now and then, you can mount this monitor vertically, which would be super helpful. So I will, um, first I'll drop the monitor just to little durability test there. And then I'll see you guys here really soon when we update the monitor, get it on the camera, see how it works. So, bye. Okay guys, we are here at a wedding. It's been a crazy day. Just first time using the Port Keys LH7P. Honestly, I've been loving it because all of your settings show up there. I was super worried about how the wireless connection would work and if it would disconnect or if it would show my settings or if it would, it's got like a half second delay on showing your white balance ISO, but like, other than that, it's mainly these four recording bars that just go around the outside that have just been fantastic. And I absolutely love having all of my settings here. No more missing shots, thinking I'm recording, thinking I'm not recording, and then missing the shot because I clicked record too many times. Now I can see it all perfectly right there. One thing I have noticed I love is also it shows your camera battery and your monitor battery like levels right here. We're powering it off at a V mount with just the um, standard barrel connection. So. It's been fantastic. And then, um, yeah, I just been really enjoying it. So for a $389 monitor, not actually bad. Well, um, that's about all I have time for today because we have to get back to work. Okay, people, we are back. A couple days later, back in the studio. Um, this wedding I was at was on Saturday and now it is uh, Tuesday. So we're back kind of regurgitating some thoughts, going over my first couple of times using this LH7P. I also got to use it at a commercial shoot yesterday. I got a couple thoughts, okay? So on the wedding day, leading up, the entire morning, fantastic. Through the ceremony, fantastic. Getting into that reception where you saw this last clip was just before the reception, again, I'm just very, very satisfied with this entire process. Yeah, the seven inch is a little bit bigger than I'm used to, but it was still a really good time, really, still really enjoyed it. And the wireless functionality of the monitor had not disconnected all day, had not glitched all day, was just solid all day long. Granted, keep in mind, I didn't, I didn't turn my camera off at all because I know the monitor has a 10 second startup time and I power everything through these V-mount batteries. So I don't, I don't necessarily have to turn my camera off all day. So keep that in mind. However, something happened at the reception and I am not 100% sure what it was or how to deal with it. You see, the monitor, as soon as the reception dancing actually started, so bands fully on stage, people are on the dance floor, as soon as that actually started, monitor disconnected, could not connect it back to the camera. Everything I tried, everything I was running through, granted I was still working a wedding day and capturing dancing footage, but every second I had to go through and try to, try to get into the camera settings, could not get it to connect. So. 14 hour long wedding day, the last two, two and a half hours, monitor, monitor worked great, I guess, but the actual on-camera controls would not connect. So I gave up and I was just like, whatever, I'll probably just return the monitor because all monitors stink anyways. And, um, but then yesterday's commercial shoot, back at it again, opened up the my camera settings, went to click on my camera, connected immediately, everything was good on the commercial shoot for the entire shoot. So, I don't know. I guess I still have a lot of work to do with this monitor, a lot of a lot of kind of quirks to figure out, a lot of kind of things to, to work with. It, it kind of opened up my fear in the original part of, why isn't this just a wired camera connection? I mean, the Sony cameras especially, they've got a, um, a, a micro USB like camera connection port. Why isn't that, like they connect to the DJI Ronins and things like that, why, why isn't that just a wired connection? Because I wouldn't mind a three cable system, a cable running for power, a cable running from HDMI, and a cable running for camera control. I think that would be a lot more reliable than relying on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection of the camera control feature. But, all that to say, so far I've used it about mm, 19 hours total, and two and a half of those hours were bad. So if you look at those ratios, 19 hours good, well, 19 hours total, two and a half hours bad, that's a pretty good ratio, I would say. So I wanna keep working with the monitor, but um, wanted to get my honest thoughts, wanted to get my honest opinions, but also 
If you know of any monitors out there that have full wired camera control that work well with Sony cameras that are decently affordable and work better than what I've been working with over the last couple years, please let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. And um, I hope this gives a general overview of just my journey with on-camera monitors and how much I typically hate them, but I'm getting better at it. So I'll catch you guys on the next video. We are on a mission here to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's crazy. We're not even to 1,000 yet at the time of recording this video. So we'll see, but I'm a man with some big goals and um, I would like to, to have you along, have you along for some of my journeys as a filmmaker, have you along for just teaching and learning and different things that I can hopefully share to the world. So I'll see you guys on the next video. There's a couple of good ones coming out this week, so I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.